In today's video, we are taking you along with us on a recent trip to National Harbor, Maryland. This resort area was developed a little over 10 years ago now on the Potomac River across from Alexandria, Virginia, and a few miles south of our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. The first thing you'll notice after parking in one of the three parking garages is that this 350-acre waterfront resort is chock full of restaurants, shops, and statues. As you walk through the area, checking out what the businesses have to offer, you're going to pass many different art installations created by local and international artists. These statues honor our military, our founders, our leaders, and even a number of our cultural icons. In the middle of all these statues, there are a number of good places to sit and rest as you walk through town. There were two much larger art installations. If you arrived at National Harbor by boat, one of the first things you'd see is the Awakening. This is a statue of a 70 foot tall giant who's just waking up on the beach and arising from under the sand. Usually you can get up close to this statue and kids even often climb on it, but the area is roped off right now due to COVID, which makes sense. You don't want COVID, but you especially don't want giant COVID. If you arrive by car like we did, the first art you see is the beckoning. This is an 85 foot tall sculpture that symbolizes the emergence of this new resort town on the banks of the Potomac. We spent a couple hours walking around, taking in the shops along the harbor. One place we stopped by was Savannah's Candy Kitchen. We went to the original Savannah's Candy Kitchen in Savannah, Georgia last year, and it was lovely. This place is a little smaller, but it had a lot of the same treats for sale. They were giving away free samples of their famous praline candy, as they call it in Georgia, or praline, as they say in Louisiana. They were delicious, so we bought some to take with us. They also had other candy made on site, such as fudge and candied apples, and then they had national candy brands as well. We stopped in a store called America. They had a lot of Washington DC souvenirs, including the annual official White House Christmas ornaments from the last decade or so, as well as Cherry Blossom Festival souvenirs, which is a big annual festival that had just ended when we went to National Harbor. We were actually going to go to that this year and last year, but COVID has resulted in the events being scaled way back the last couple of years, so we want to wait to go see it when things are back to normal. There was a ton of political memorabilia here, so whichever team you play for, there were plenty of things here that you would like and not like. In addition to the DC souvenirs, they had a small amount of National Harbor and even just general Maryland mementos as well. The Washington Nationals have a team store here, as well as this cool team golf cart that's on display, along with a lot of other team memorabilia. Also in the area was a place called Potomac Gourmet Market. It had groceries you could pick up if you needed any on your trip. They also had alcohol. Like lots and lots of alcohol. But they also have a menu of sandwiches, wraps, soups, and smoothies that you can order from. We actually got breakfast sandwiches there one morning. There are a lot of restaurants to choose from in the area. We ate at a couple of them and we'll post reviews of those soon. 
This resort area has eight different hotels to choose from. We will do a hotel tour video soon of the hotel we ended up staying in, along with other videos about our visit to National Harbor. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe and click the notification bell to be alerted when we post future videos. We didn't stay in the hotel we really wanted to stay in, which was the Gaylord National Resort and Convention Center. There are five Gaylord hotels across the country that are known for having huge glass atriums, large convention centers, and numerous shopping, dining, and entertainment options on site. We've heard great things about these resorts, but the Gaylord National remains closed as a result of the COVID pandemic. They're the only hotel in the area that remains closed. They have announced their reopening on July 1st, 2021. And they've used the 15 month closure to complete some renovations on property. With 2000 available rooms, this is the largest hotel in the Washington DC area, but we couldn't stay there. So we're planning to go back and check it out one day after it reopens. The next hotel we wanted to stay in was the MGM National Harbor. This 300 room MGM resort has numerous restaurants, stores, a 3000 seat event theater and a casino. We did visit this hotel for a couple hours to check it out on our way out of town. So we'll have a video coming out with a tour of it, but we didn't stay there because it was about a mile away from all the other things we wanted to see and do in National Harbor. Over near the MGM is the Tanger Outlets featuring over 70 outlets if you're interested in some retail therapy. And there's also a top golf location, which is a lot of fun, even if you aren't good at the actual game of golf. In addition to the hotels and restaurants and shops, the area has several recreational attractions. The biggest one is the Capitol Wheel. This 180 foot tall Ferris wheel is located on a pier in the Potomac River and lets you take a ride that lasts about 15 minutes in the wheel's enclosed climate controlled gondolas. You go around the wheel several times at a pretty slow speed and you get great views of National Harbor as well as across the river into Virginia and in the distance you can even see the Washington Monument in DC. Tickets to ride this wheel are $15 per adult and $11.25 per child. There is a VIP gondola which costs $50 per person. This particular VIP gondola has bucket seats instead of benches. It's fitted with Amazon Alexa technology and it has a glass bottom floor. At the bottom of the wheel on the pier is an outdoor bar and lounge that's called Flight Deck, which is open seasonally. Here's a pro tip for the Capitol Wheel. Don't take Alice with you when you go. <laughs> yeah, so even though I do have a fear of heights, I thought I would be fine on this wheel because after all, the gondolas were completely enclosed, so no one's going to fall out. They were air conditioned. There were benches so I could sit the whole time. And I've been to the top of the Eiffel Tower, which is over four times this wheel's height. Although I think that was probably before I developed a fear of heights. But once I got on and the gondola started rocking, even though it was just rocking a little bit, I was not okay. It was actually difficult for Jack to get this footage because I was holding on to him so tightly. I kept my eyes closed pretty much the whole time. So if you have a fear of heights, I don't think I would suggest that you do this ride. In addition to this horrid wheel, there is also a carousel nearby. Tickets are $7 per child for unlimited rides and adults can ride free with their child. There was also a children's play area with animal statues that kids could climb on, though it was roped off due to COVID concerns. There's a Capitol bike share station nearby where you can rent bicycles to ride on the trail along the harbor. And if you want to get out on the water, you can rent kayaks, paddle boats, and swan pedal boats at the pier. They even have these hydro bikes, which we hadn't seen before, but they look like a lot of fun. They also had water taxis that could take you to Alexandria, Virginia, or to Washington, D.C. to sightsee in the area before bringing you back to National Harbor. As our first day in National Harbor came to a close, we got a great view of the sunset by the Capitol Wheel. Then we headed off to spend an evening at Bobby McKee's Dueling Piano Bar. 
If you've watched many of our videos, you may have already heard of our love for dueling piano bars. The shows at these places consist of two musicians sitting at pianos across from each other who take turns playing songs requested by audience members. We were given napkins to write down what songs we want to hear, and our server would take them up to the stage and hand them to the performers. If you include a tip with your request, uh, performing your song will be a much greater priority to the performers. They can perform anything, rock, country, rap, oldies, R&B, whatever you request. And they can perform most songs from memory, though they do have iPads up with them on stage, so if you happen to request a song they're not very familiar with, they can look those up. The performers usually include a good deal of comedy in their shows, and audience participation is highly encouraged. It's kind of like karaoke, but instead of drunk people who aren't very good singers performing, this is professional musicians performing the songs you request as the whole crowd sings along to them. The tickets to get in here started at $35 each. The food here was just typical bar food. We hadn't had dinner yet, so we tried their chicken fingers, their cheese fries, and then later in the show, we ordered mozzarella sticks. It all tasted all right, but not great. It was like the caliber of food you get in most bars or at stadium concession stands. These apps were all around $10 to $12. The drinks, however, were much better. They had an open bar and they could fix any drink you asked for. We ordered a couple off the menu. One was the June Bug, featuring Malibu rum, melon liqueur, peach snops, and garnished with a pineapple. This one was great. The other one we ordered off their menu was the Bar Dancer, which featured Stoli strawberry lemonade and strawberry puree. It wasn't as good as Junebug, but it was pretty good. Both drinks were $10, but they could make any kind of cocktail you were in the mood for, and they had a selection of beer and wines as well. We had a great time here, enjoying a night of singing along to the live music. Tables had been spaced out to allow for social distancing. You were supposed to wear your mask the whole time unless you were actively eating or drinking. In fact, at all of National Harbor, uh, you're supposed to always wear your mask in any public space, both indoors and outdoors, according to the local regulations. But this was a fun way to end our day. We'll have more videos about our trip to National Harbor, Maryland posted soon, along with videos on our recent trips to Orlando, the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and Virginia Beach, Virginia. So please subscribe to learn more about these destinations and to see where we go next. I'm Alice. And I'm Jeff. And we'll see you the next time we're traveling through.